Now, the rest of the story. Preparing for the Battle of the Atlantic in the Second World War, our President Roosevelt and British Prime Minister Churchill met in Argentia, Newfoundland. At that meeting, Roosevelt ripped a map from the pages of a National Geographic. It was a map of the North Atlantic. He drew a line down the middle separating east from west. And then to Churchill he proposed that the British Royal Navy be responsible for everything east of the line. Roosevelt promised protection for British convoys traveling anywhere in the western zone. American escort, vessels, destroyers, whatever. And Churchill was delighted. Thus was produced the Atlantic Charter, a statement of mutual maritime objectives. Now, that meeting took place in August. September 4, an American destroyer, the Greer, was attacked by a German U-boat 200 miles southwest of American-occupied Iceland. The submarine fired torpedoes. The destroyer dropped depth charges. Nobody got hurt. But FDR got mad. His orders to the Navy attacked German warships on sight. But in the middle of one night, the following month, Another American destroyer was fired on, the Kearney, and this time a German torpedo found its mark. Eleven on the destroyer were killed in the last blast, although the vessel managed to limp into port. The USS Reuben James was not so fortunate. Affectionately referred to as the Rube, she was a, a trim old warship, a four-pipe destroyer, Late in October, she had been sent to assist a British convoy west of Ireland. But at dawn on the 31st, her direction finder locked on U-boat signals. And moments later, the explosion. A German torpedo had struck the Reuben James, just forward of her number one stack. Her bow section sank immediately. The rest of her followed within five minutes. Her crew had numbered 160 when she'd left port. But after she went down, only 45 were rescued from the icy water. Her captain, all of her officers, were lost. We even know the German submarine responsible, the U-562. But imagine this. Popular history begs the impression that the United States became shockingly, suddenly, spontaneously involved in World War II, drawn into it by the spur of a dreadful moment by a Japanese surprise attack in the Pacific. Look closer, however. You'll see that we declared war when it was convenient rather than when it was called for. You see, the events of which you've just learned, the explosive beginnings of the Battle of the Atlantic happened in 1941. In every sense but technically, we were at war with Germany. We were shooting at each other, after all. But those days did not live in infamy. You see, the United States warship Reuben James was sunk by a German torpedo, and 115 Americans went to the bottom with her on that last day of October. October 1941. That's a month prior to Pearl Harbor. Now you know who. The rest of the story. And now the rest of the rest of the story. This was one of those stories by Mr. Harvey which gave me chill bumps. Like most Americans, I was always told that we were drawn into war by the Japanese surprise attack on Pearl Harbor, December 7, 1941. This was the date, you know, that Roosevelt said would live in infamy. I had never heard of the USS Reuben James. The USS Reuben James was commissioned on September 24, 1920. The ship carried four-inch naval rifles and a battery of anti-aircraft guns. The ship was 314 feet long and 30 feet wide. In March of 1941, the Reuben James was ordered to lead four other destroyers in escorting convoys halfway to Great Britain. The Reuben James and the other destroyers escorted the convoys as far as Iceland, and British ships escorted the convoys the rest of the way. On October 23rd, the Reuben James and four other destroyers escorted 
Convoy HX-156 from Newfoundland en route to Iceland. 43 merchant ships made up the convoy. The convoy left Halifax, Nova Scotia on October 23rd and the escort destroyers joined them the following day at Newfoundland. Before dawn on October 31st, 1941, the Reuben James picked up what was called a Huff Duff bearing. Huff Duff was the nickname for high frequency direction finding equipment. The U-boats used high frequency radios to communicate with their land-based headquarters. The Reuben James picked up the transmission signal from a pack of U-boats on their Huff Duff and were dropping depth charges. The captain of the Reuben James positioned the ship in between the wolf pack and the convoy of ships. Mr. Harvey said the U-boat was U-562, but it was actually U-552. The Reuben James was not flying the flag of the United States during the convoy. At dawn, U-552 aimed and fired a torpedo at one of the merchant ships in the convoy, but the torpedo struck the Reuben James instead. Maybe a lucky hit. The torpedo triggered an explosion in the ship's forward magazine. The bow, the front of the Reuben James, was blown completely off and sank immediately. The aft section of the ship floated for about five minutes before it slowly sank to the depths. Reuben James has the unfortunate distinction of being the first American warship sunk during World War II. The sinking of the Reuben James was the greatest single American naval vessel disaster since the blasting of the USS Maine at the beginning of the Spanish-American War. 260 sailors on the Maine were killed. Although U-boats including U-552 attacked the same convoy on the following day, none of the merchant ships were hit, nor were any of the escort destroyers. Convoy HX-156 reached Liverpool on November 5th 1941. The Reuben James was the first American ship to be sunk in World War II, but it was the third American ship to be fired upon. On September 4th, a submarine fired torpedoes at the USS Greer, but missed. On the night of October 16th, or early morning of October 17th, the USS Kearney was hit by a German torpedo. Eleven sailors died, but the ship limped to an undisclosed port. You know, it's easy for us to say that out of 160 men, only 45 were rescued. When we say these numbers, we usually forget that each number represents a human life. Newspapers around the country shared the news of the sinking and shared photos of some of the sailors aboard the Reuben James who purportedly lost their lives. Imagine learning in the morning newspaper that your loved one had died in this manner. Mrs. Jacob Harris of Hammond, Indiana, was heartbroken to read that none of the officers aboard the ship survived. Her brother, Benjamin Getzler, was the second in command on the destroyer. Let's take just a moment to look at some of those newspaper articles. According to popular history in most textbooks, 
we were pulled into war by the attack on Pearl Harbor. Mr. Harvey usually ended his broadcast with, Now you know the rest of the story. But it would be more fitting to end this one with, Now you know the real story. I'm Brad Dyson. Thanks for watching. And as Paul Harvey would say, Good day.